Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to do a beach ball gravity die. All right, I'm trying something just totally outside of the norm, and I guess we're gonna call this gorilla style recording because I don't have any way to do, like, you know, put it on something to record. So I just have to come out and do it this way, you guys. So what I've done is I took a medium size Gildan shirt and put it on a beach ball, which is then sitting on a, my five gallon bucket, which is then sitting on just a little dollar store container to elevate it so it's not down in the bark dust. And then I have this ice barrier and I'm gonna go grab my die and we're gonna see what happens. Okay, so the next step, I added my dye and I did four colors, kind of like in pieces of the pie. And I added it more to the ball than the shirt because I felt like maybe that would um, break up and split down the shirt versus having like a really distinct spot of dye. I don't know if this is gonna work or not, but we're gonna see what happens. All right, so I just added my Pribcho ice. That's my large ice machine ice. And I made sure to hold the ice barrier when I added the ice so it wouldn't tip it over. And when I did, it did knock some of the powder down, but I think it'll be all right as the ice melts. The timer just went off for one hour. And I'm really surprised at how much saturation there is already. I didn't think there would be that much. Let me, oh, let me go around this way. I'm scared I'm gonna tip it over. So things are looking pretty good, but along the back here, let me get around this way. Hope I don't get in, in the spiders. Not so much, and I think that has a lot to do with the fact that I didn't do a very good job of getting the ice barrier uh, on it level. So I think, it's like, do I leave it alone or do I reposition it a little bit? Oh, let's see, let me cut back around. See how much it's leaning? And the ball could be deflating too, I don't know. But I feel like I should tip it because the saturation is so good on this side and not so good on that side. Oh. Okay, well let me see what I decide to do, hold on. The ball is deflating a little bit and I didn't even think about it. I should have put gloves on. Oh well, no big deal. But I did reposition it a little bit. So when you do yours, my recommendation is to pay attention and make sure that you get your ice barrier on top and everything lined up. But so far, I'm thinking this looks pretty cool. And I wish I would have maybe used more contrasting colors. I wanted everything to blend well together, but it's almost blending a lot. And I wasn't sure how the sleeves would do. Let me come around again. I thought, you know, the thick, thickness of the sleeves wouldn't get dyed all the way, but so far, so good. And honestly, maybe a little bit of white won't be a bad thing, but I do hope to see more saturation on the back. So I'm gonna go set the timer for another hour. And I think, I think the bottom is down, sitting in the muck a little bit because it's actually creeping up the shirt, which is pretty cool. Let me see if I can come around. I'm just so scared I'm gonna tip it over, you guys. Ooh. Yeah. So maybe a beach ball is not the best way because I definitely think it's losing its air. But 
but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Lots of ice still to go, so. All right, we'll be back. All right, so it's done. Now I'm going to cover it and let it batch for as long as I possibly can before it gets too cold for the evening. I might just let it just sit outside overnight and see what happens. All right, so I'm just gonna see what happens. I've covered it and in theory, it should batch for 24 hours. Like I said, I might just leave it overnight and it's gonna get cool and then maybe I'll leave it for the afternoon because it'll get hot again, you know. Trial and error, we'll see what happens. All right, I just pulled the bag off and right off the bat, this right here is concerning to me the way that it looks, but everything else looks pretty cool. Let me come around to the back side. Looking pretty. The beach ball did not deflate, so that's pretty cool. So I'm just gonna take it in now to the sink and do the normal rinse out process and I'll show you guys that. And then we'll see the final results. So when I finally got the shirt to the sink, I realized that it was pretty dried out. And you know, that comes from doing it in the summertime outdoors. And even though it was covered with the plastic bag, air was still able to get up in there. So I'm going to have to figure out a different way to do it because when your projects dry out, they no longer are batching. So I'm gonna work on this. But for the rinse out, you wanna start by using cold water. That's going to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric and then increase your water up too hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. From here, I take it to the washing machine and I use Kirilon, which is a professional textile detergent. And I also use Millsoft, which is a professional fabric softener. And I get both of those from Dharma Trading Company. And you can find links for them down below in the description box. And then I'll put it in the dryer and I'll iron it and we'll come back and we'll see the results. Well, here it is guys. Here's our shirt after it's been washed and dried and I think it turned out really cool. It was a fun experiment to do. I am a little disappointed that it's not as vibrant as I was hoping it would be. It looked much better when it was still on the beach ball, but I think what happened is, you know, it dried out in the 80 degree heat and then it got cold at night, maybe dropped down below 70 degrees. And so when your project dries out, the chemical reaction between the Procyon dye and the soda ash stop. So your batching is done right there. So I don't think this got the full 24 hours. So the colors are a little more pastel. Now this shirt is a medium Gildan prepared for dyeing shirt from jiffyshirts.com. And it has a very unusual texture to it. So the outside of the shirt, it's, I don't know if you can see that, it's, it's textured and it's not very soft. Although it does seem to be bigger than the regular Gildan shirts. But when you look at the inside of the shirt, all this sort of texture is not there. And maybe that's because I should have turned it inside out to dye it. I don't know. Anyways. This is something that I'm definitely going to play around with because I think there is some good value in doing this method. I just need to come up with a, a more controlled way to do it. So overall, I'm pretty happy with it though. What do you guys think? Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing!